Captain James Cook, most notably known for his jaw-dropping achievements, discovering parts of the world that had never been discovered previously, his stunning, unprecedented bravery to sail across the roughest seas, yet many never consider what really happened when James Cook set sail. One might consider what life would have been like if you were being invaded. So, is Captain Cook really that hero we've all known him to be? James Cook was born on 27th October 1728 in Yorkshire. Despite never receiving formal education, Cook studied mathematics, charting, geography and astronomy. At the age of 16, Cook moved to the fishing village of Staves. Many historians believe this had influenced his desire to sail. Two years later, Cook joined the British Merchant Navy. After the Seven Years' War broke out between Britain and France in 1755, Cook joined the Royal Navy and served in North America, where he learned to survey and chart coastal waters. In 1758, Cook became captain and served in Canada. He caught the attention of the Admiralty and Royal Service of England by mapping much of the entrance to the St. Lawrence River during the Siege of Quebec. Cook was later appointed by the Royal Society to take part in a secret mission to uncharted areas of the Pacific to search for a continent or land of great extent which may be found to the southward, and to take possession of convenient situations in the country in the name of the King of Great. To understand the context, we need to remember most of the world was undiscovered in the 18th century. With America becoming independent after the American Revolutionary War, Britain had to search for new colonies for their convicts. In the following decade, Cook made three main voyages. His first two were to find the southern continent, with his final voyage trying to discover the Northwest Passage. On his first voyage, Cook took astronomical observations in Tahiti, mapped New Zealand and the east coast of what was then known as New Holland. Cook made some encounters with the Aboriginals and Maori people. The voyage was extremely successful in collecting astronomical observations, valuable specimens of flora and fauna, and accurately mapping the east coast of Australia and New Zealand. Adamant that there was a great southern land below Australia, Cook returned into HMS Resolution for a second voyage to explore vast areas of the Pacific, confirming the great southern land was a myth. Many islands that were not mapped previously were discovered. Cook's final voyage saw him searching for the Northwest Passage as a shortcut between Europe and America, saving significant time and cost. Cook explored the North and Pacific and mapped extensive parts of North America and Alaska. While stopping in Hawaii for supply, Cook was killed by the natives and died in Hawaii on the 14th of February 1779. Cook's expeditions enabled the British Empire to grow, colonise and find a home for their convicts. Specimens collected had great scientific value, whilst Cook's accurate maps increased geographers' understanding of the earth. Those who suffered most were indigenous people in Australia, New Zealand and Hawaii, where locals were shot by Cook's men. Even today, the impacts of colonisation still linger. One of the main supporters of Captain Cook was the Admiralty. They entrusted him to lead three main voyages to discover the Great Southern Land, Northwest Passage and other parts of the world. Another key supporter was Joseph Banks, an English naturalist and botanist. Banks believed that exploration of the unknown world were of significant scientific value. Banks urged King George III to support Cook's expeditions. He travelled alongside Cook on the endeavour and advocated British settlement of Australia. Those who opposed Cook were the indigenous Australians, Maori people and the native Hawaiians. Many of the places discovered by Cook were already inhabited by the natives. Some of Cook's encounters with indigenous people were hostile. Cook's personal diary provided detailed description of him firing a musket to make them retire back where bundles of their darts lay and one of them took up a stone and threw at Cook which caused him firing a second musket. Cook's aggressive approach antagonised the Hawaiian natives. Cook captured and took hostage of the leader of a native clan. As depicted in John Rickman's account, Cook went ashore and tried to take King Kalanapu hostage, but the Hawaiians feared their leader would be killed and swarmed to his aid. It is evident that the native people opposed Cook because he had invaded the land which they inhabited for thousands of years. Another opposer of Cook was Benjamin Franklin. Franklin opposed Cook because Franklin was leading America's charge to independence and was aware of the advantage that Cook's skill brought to the British's attempt to keep their colony. However, in hope of avoiding violent contact, Franklin actually stated that should his crew encounter Cook to treat them with all civility and kindness. The attitudes towards Captain Cook in modern days are mixed. Cook was a hero to many as he discovered Australia and New Zealand. His expeditions provided significant geographical and scientific knowledge, thereby benefiting later expeditions. He played a crucial role in shaping history of Australia and New Zealand. 
On the other hand, the sense of Maori, native Hawaiian, Aboriginals, or Torres Strait Islander believe Cook was partly responsible for the dramatic decrease in Indigenous population and destruction of years of culture and history. A recent study found that 62% of Aboriginals and Torres Strait Islanders believe that Cook is a symbol of invasion. Multiple statues of Captain Cook were also vandalised in Australia during the Black Lives Matter movement. Despite the controversy, history should judge Captain Cook as a hero instead of a villain. People believe Cook is a colonial villain because he was responsible for the deaths of 30 native Hawaiians, 9 Maori people and at least 3 Aboriginals. However, the motives and reasoning behind these must be considered. For example, Cook took hostage of King Kalanapu because the native Hawaiians had stolen a colour ship from Cook. In many instances, Cook acted in self-defence when being threatened by natives using spears and darts. The transcript written by Joseph Banks provided valuable insight to Cook's personal view of the natives. Another primary source, taken from the journal of HMS Endeavour, states the native of New Holland may appear to be the most wretched people upon earth, but in reality they are far happier than we Europeans. This source provided valuable insight to Cook's perception of the natives and appreciation of their simple lifestyle. Also, people claimed that Cook was brutal to his own men. Whilst he did occasionally whip and flog some crew members, it is crucial to understand that during the 18th century, such punishment was common practice, making this an invalid argument that Cook was a villain. According to an account by one of Cook's officers, Cook took extreme care of his men and his crew's health was his number one priority. On the comparative, there are four main reasons why Captain Cook is a hero rather than a villain. Firstly, Cook helped pioneer new methods for warding off scurvy. In the 18th century, scurvy, a disease caused by a lack of vitamin C, was widespread in sea voyages. Cook succeeded in keeping all his expeditions nearly scurvy-free by producing fresh food at each stop and adding sordicorn, a nutrient-rich pickled cabbage, to the diet. Secondly, Cook debunked misleading theories about the Great Southern Land and created the first accurate map of the Pacific, Australia and New Zealand, thereby paving the way for future expeditions. Additionally, in the 18th century, sailing to uncharted territories required enormous courage and determination. As an intrepid explorer, Cook's courage was unparalleled. Finally, Cook's contribution to the scientific world is unmatched. Cook overcame geographical constraints and collected valuable flora and fauna specimens during his voyages, which enhanced knowledge of scientists. In summary, Captain Cook should be considered a hero because he brought significant benefits to the world and his expeditions opened a new world to scientists, geographers and future explorers.